Good morning, everyone. A very good morning to all of you. Good morning, guys. Fata fat se join kariye. Aaj ki class ham logo ke liye kafi important hone wali hai, kyunki aaj se ham logo ka MCQ ka supper start karne wale hai ham log. Hi Ata, hi Vidisha, hi Shashvi, hello Sabarjit, hi Gaurav, hi Sanya. A very good morning. Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year, ma'am. Aaj happy New Year. Okay, happy financial year. Aaj financial year hai. Okay. Aaj April Fool bhi hai. Agar aap sabko pata ho to. Good morning, Suhana. Good morning, Dipesh. Guys, uh, aap logo ki request par finally, uh, jaisa ki mainne aap logo ke saath promise kiya tha ki mein March ke end se pehle pehle aap logo ka saara syllabus complete karwa dungi. To humne 21 ya 22 March tak apna pura syllabus complete kar liya tha. उसके बाद मैंने आपसे प्रॉमिस किया था कि मैं आप लोगों के लिए एमसीक्यू का सेशन लेकर आऊंगी सो so, वो प्रॉमिस भी अब आज से मेरा यू uh, नो you know, मैंने फुलफिल करना अब स्टार्ट कर दिया है आज से हम लोगों की एमसीक्यू की सीरीज स्टार्ट हो रही है आप लोगों से बस एक हम्बल रिक्वेस्ट है कि प्लीज मेरी ये वीडियोस जो है इनको लाइक कर देना और अपने फ्रेंड्स के साथ शेयर कर देना हु सो एवर इज डूइंग सी ए सी एस एंड सी एम ए क्योंकि मैं ऑनेस्टली बताऊँ ये एम की जो सीरीज है ये सिर्फ सी के बच्चों के लिए बेनिफिशियल नहीं है ये बाकी के उन सभी स्टूडेंट्स के लिए बेनिफिशियल है जिनके सिलेबस में इंडियन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्ट एटीन सेवेंटी टू है ठीक है तो मेरे लिए बस इतना कर देना कि डू शेयर इट विद इन योर सर्कल्स लाइक व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप्स और टेलीग्राम ग्रुप्स जो भी आपके व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप्स एंड टेलीग्राम ग्रुप्स हैं प्लीज डू डू दैट हाई कशेष हेलो हीर हाई ललिता चलो नाउ विदाउट वेस्टिंग एनी टाइम विदाउट वेस्टिंग एनी एनी टाइम हम लोग जो है शुरुआत करते हैं और मैं आप लोगों के लिए सामने लेकर आई हूँ एम की सीरीज अच्छा अभी मेरा देखो टारगेट क्या रहने वाला है जरा टारगेट के ऊपर भी फोकस कर लेते हैं ठीक है मैं आप लोगों के साथ जो है जितने भी प्लान बनेंगे आप लोगों के साथ बनेंगे सारे स्कड्यूल्स में आप लोगों के साथ जो है वो शेयर करने वाली हूँ कुछ बीच बीच में आप लोगों को टिप्स भी मैं डेफिनेटली शेयर किया करूंगी मैंने आप लोगों के लिए अगर आप सबको याद हो तो गाइज मैंने आप सबके लिए एक टाइम स्केड्यूल सेट किया था और जिसके अकॉर्डिंगली मैंने कहा था कि यार अपना टाइम टेबल एक बनाकर चलिए ताकि आप लोग ना बड़े ही आराम से सारे के सारे सिलेबस को इन अ शॉर्ट पीरियड ऑफ टाइम आप उसे कंप्लीट कर पाए तो देखो हम लोगों का मोटिव क्या रहने वाला है हम लोगों का पर्पस क्या रहने वाला है हम लोग अपने एम सी क्यू सेशन करेंगे जैसे कि आप लोग स्क्रीन पर देख पा रहे हो ठीक है ये हम लोगों के क्या है एम सी क्यू सेशन है मतलब मल्टीपल चॉइस क्वेश्चन हैं मल्टीपल चॉइस क्वेश्चन जो होते हैं ना वो क्यों करने जरूरी होते हैं इसलिए जरूरी होते हैं ताकि आप लोगों की एनालिटिकल स्किल्स जो है ना वो अच्छी बन सके एम सी क्यू जब आप लोग करते हो तो उससे आप लोगों की राइटिंग प्रैक्टिस नहीं हो रही है ठीक है इससे कोई राइटिंग प्रैक्टिस नहीं हो रही है लेकिन राइटिंग प्रैक्टिस तक पहुंचने के लिए जो आप लोगों के पास कंटेंट होना चाहिए वो कंटेंट कैसा होना चाहिए और कैसा नहीं होना चाहिए कब वो एक्टिव वॉइस में लिखा जाता है कब वो पैसिव वॉइस में लिखा जाता है उन सभी चीजों के लिए बच्चे हम लोगों के पास बहुत जरूरी है कि कंटेंट अच्छा हो मुझे बस ये बता दीजिए मैसेज करके एम आई कंप्लीटली ऑडिबल एंड विजिबल टू ईच वन ऑफ यू क्योंकि अब हम लोग जब शुरुआत करेंगे एक घंटे तक हम लोग साथ में जुड़े रहेंगे इस एक घंटे में मेरा ये टारगेट है कि हम हर दिन कम से कम 50 एम तो करें अब देखो आप लोगों के रिस्पांस के ऊपर भी डिपेंड करता है कि आप लोग कितना जल्दी रिस्पांस देते हैं हम लोगों के इस एम के रिवीजन में हम अपना हमारी एनालिटिकल अप्रोच रहेगी हम एनालाइज करेंगे कि क्यों ये एमसीक्यू किस तरीके से बनाया गया और इससे हमें क्या सीखने को मिल रहा है और अगर हमें अटेम्प्ट करने को आता है तो हमें इसे कैसे अटेम्प्ट करना है देखो सीएमए के बच्चे जितने भी मेरे पास यहाँ पर अभी जुड़े हुए हैं साथ में आई वुड लाइक टू टेल यू ऑल की भाई आपका एम बेस्ड ही पूरा का पूरा एग्जाम होने वाला है नेगेटिव मार्किंग भी नहीं होगी लेकिन स्टिल आई वुड लाइक टू टेल यू ऑल कि जस्ट बिकॉज आप लोगों का एम सी क्यू बेस्ड है या फिर जस्ट बिकॉज उसमें नेगेटिव मार्किंग नहीं है तो उसको इतना लाइटली भी मत ले लेना 
ठीक है ये जो आप लोगों के चैप्टर्स है जो मैं इस पूरे महीने भर में आप लोगों को करवाने वाली हूँ ये सारे के सारे चैप्टर्स आपका पीछा नहीं छोड़ने वाले चाहे से आप ग्रेजुएशन करें या पोस्ट ग्रेजुएशन करें या आगे चलकर इंटरमीडिएट में भी जब जाएंगे तब भी इन चैप्टर्स का कुछ ना कुछ हिस्सा जो है वो आप लोगों के साथ जुड़ा रहेगा तो जब करना ही है बैठना ही है नीति मैम को देखना ही पड़ेगा उनका सुननी ही पड़ेगी उनकी बात तो क्यों ना हम इस पढ़ाई को इन स्टडीज को इस तरीके से करें कि मेरी ग्रोथ हो रही है तो जब भी आप लोग मेरी क्लासेस के यू नो अटेंड करेंगे हमेशा सबसे पहले मन में एक ही लाइन आनी चाहिए दैट आई एम ग्रोइंग आई एम प्रोग्रेसिंग मैं और फोकस हो रही हूँ मैं और ग्रोथ कर रही हूँ इसी परस्पेक्टिव के साथ हम लोग शुरुआत करते हैं देखो मीनिंग एंड एसेंशियल ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट की अगर मैं बात करूं तो हम लोगों का जो टारगेट है वो सबसे पहले क्या है कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्ट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स कैसे बनते हैं क्योंकि कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स जो है ना कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स से रिलेटेड जो आप लोगों का चैप्टर है दैट इज आई सी एटीन सेवेंटी टू बच्चे इस चैप्टर की खासियत ये है कि ये चैप्टर बहुत ही फ्लेक्सिबल है ये चैप्टर एक ऐसा चैप्टर है जो कहता है कि किसी भी ट्रांजेक्शन में अगर किसी भी आप लोगों के यू नो अग्रीमेंट में मल्टीपल लॉज अप्लाई होते हैं देन यू शुड रेफर टू दो स्पेसिफिक लॉज इंस्टेड ऑफ मी सो आई सी एटीन सेवेंटी टू इज समहाउ अ काइंड ऑफ अ यू नो लॉ विच इज अ विच इज नॉट अ स्पेसिफिक लॉ इट इज अ जनरल लॉ समझ रहे हैं इट इज अ जनरल लॉ जो कि आपके जनरली हर ट्रांजैक्शन के ऊपर एप्लीकेबल होता है चाहे से आप मोवेबल गुड्स खरीदे चाहे इमोवेबल चाहे आप सर्विसेज में डील करें गुड्स में करें वॉट्स डजेंट मैटर एट ऑल सो इट इज समथिंग विच इज एप्लीकेबल ऑन ईच एंड एवरी टाइप ऑफ द ट्रांजेक्शन प्रोवाइडेड इट इज अ बिजनेस अग्रीमेंट बट इन केस इन वॉट एवर ट्रांजेक्शन यू आर हैंडलिंग इन केस अगर उसके ऊपर कोई दूसरा लॉ भी अप्लाई होता है तो आप उस दूसरे लॉ को उस स्पेसिफिक लॉ को ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंस देंगे आप आईसीए को फिर एक बार के लिए इग्नोर कर सकते हैं जैसे कि इफ एल से आईसीए 1872 मेंशंस दैट अ माइनर कैन नॉट फॉर्म एन अग्रीमेंट राइट he is an incompetent party he or she is an incompetent person so a minor cannot ever form an agreement but if i am talking about the indian partnership act 1932 as per section number 30 a partner can also be admitted into the partnership form right so now when we are having this kind of a situation we are supposed to follow the specific law for the partnership that is the ipa so this thing needs to be kept in mind now when we are talking about the ica 1872 this is a kind of an act which is a pre independence act it came into force before the independence and it is the adaptation of the mercantile law which has been given by the english persons that is the english laws adaptation right it came into force on 1st of the september 1872 and this particular act is applicable to whole of the india क्लियर है अभी बात करते हैं किसके रिगार्डिंग मीनिंग एंड एसेंशियल्स ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट में सो वन बाय वन विल टेक वन एमसीक्यू आप लोगों को मैं टेन सेकंड्स देने वाली हूँ उन टेन सेकंड्स में यू हैव टू आंसर इट टेन सेकंड्स के बाद आई विल आंसर इट ओके सो देखो आई डोंट हैव अ पोलिंग सिस्टम हियर राइट नाउ मैम क्वेश्चन ब्लर दिख रहा है क्वेश्चन ब्लर दिख रहा है ओके okay. चलो सबर जीत ने सजेशन दिया है तो आई एम श्योर कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं होगा नो प्रॉब्लम एट ऑल मैं इसको जूम कर दूंगी और अभी हमारा ये जूम हो जाएगा एंड देन यू गाइस कैन डेफिनेटली हैव अ लुक ऑन द क्वेश्चन आई होप नाउ इट इज कंप्लीटली एंड इजीली विजिबल टू ईच वन ऑफ यू राइट Now let's start with question number one without any delay. The law of contract in India is contained. See, uh, when when I'm talking about the uh, MCQ part, starting five or ten questions when we are talking and when we are discussing about the MCQ perspective, the starting questions like four or five questions or ten questions, they all are going to be very simple. So we'll just read them and then we'll move forward. Now. Question number one: The law of contract is India is contained in the ICA 1872, ICA 1972, or the Indian Contract Act 1930. Tell me, which one is the correct option? Obviously, Niti Ma'am, यहाँ पर हमारा correct option क्या रहने वाला है? बोलो. The correct option is the correct option is the Indian Contract Act 1872. That's a very simple question. 
Next question number two. The Indian Contract Act came into force on 1st September 1872, on 1st September 1972, on 1st of July 1930, or 1st of July 1932. It is clearly 1872, 1st September. So, is the correct option? Hoga? That is question number A. Right. Guys, uh, when I am talking about these MCQ sessions, more of testing your knowledge, what I am going to do is going to clear your doubts. So in any case, you guys have any kind of a doubt on any particular topic, please do share it with me straight away. The benefit of having the live lectures is this only that you can talk to me directly. You can place your doubts directly to me. So please be aware of it. Avoid every kind of the distraction. Now, Question number three, the Indian Contract Act applies to whole of the India, whole of India, including the state of Jammu and Kashmir, whole of India, except Goa, Daman, Diu. But I don't think so. We need to read it further because it is very simple that the ICA is applicable to whole of the India. We don't have to mention including or excluding the state of Jammu and Kashmir because Jammu and Kashmir is a part of India. So we are no further required to use it separately or specifically. When we are saying this, that ICA is applicable to whole of the India, it means it is applicable to each and every state, which is a part of the Indian territory. Next, question number four. Law of contract is the whole law of agreement. It is the whole law of obligation. Now, when we are talking about question number four, you need to tell me law of contract is the whole law of agreements or is it the whole law of obligation? Or is it the whole law of agreements and obligations? And option D is not the whole law of agreements, nor is it the whole law of the obligation. Tell me, when we are talking about question number four, four which option is the correct option? Which one is the correct option? Tell me. Which one is the correct option? Clearly, when I am talking about, listen. When I am talking about the ICA 1872, it is a law of contracts. It is a law of contracts, which is applicable only on the contract, right? Contracts means what? It means a kind of a business agreement. It means a kind of a business agreement and every contract has got some sort of the obligation. Every contract have got some sort of the obligation. I'm saying some sort of obligations, not every kind of obligations. I mean, there is an obligation on us to pay the taxes. There's an obligation on us to respect our elders, right? All these obligations are not the part of, you know, law of contracts. So when I am talking about law of contracts, what is the main important thing is that law of contracts, that is the ICA 1872, covers not all the agreements because we have got the social agreements also. We have with us domestic agreements also. But the only kind of agreements which is applicable for the ICA, which is, with uh, you know, which is applicable on the ICA 1872 are the business agreements, correct? So, ICA 1872 do contains the provisions with respect to the agreement, but not every kind of agreement. Correct. In the same way, ICA 1872, that is the law of contract, do talks about some of the obligation, but not every kind of the obligation. So, ICA 1872, that is the law of contract, is not the whole law of obligation or the whole law of agreements. Am I clear with this? Tell me. The correct option is D. Law of contract is not the whole law of agreements, nor is it the whole law of obligation. Next question number five. An agreement is an offer, acceptance, offer plus acceptance, offer plus acceptance plus enforceability. Now tell me, when I am talking about an agreement, agreements includes two types of agreements. Or uh, if I'll say broadly, three kind of agreements. One is the business agreement. One is the domestic agreement. One is the social agreement. Correct? Now, when, whether, uh, you know, whether I am forming a social agreement, a domestic agreement or a business agreement, offer is required, correct. Acceptance is required, correct. But enforceability is not necessarily required to form an agreement. Enforceability is not necessarily required to form an agreement. For a contract, it is a necessity. 
that there should be the enforceability of the law see i hope you guys must must be remembering this part that offer plus acceptance will form a promise promise in exchange you will get the consideration and now finally you will get the agreement so now you can see for the formation of the agreement the enforceability of law is not necessarily required if the enforceability of law is there then it is a contract and if it is not there then it is a mere agreement maybe a social agreement or maybe a domestic agreement so for the question number 5 just tell me which one is the correct option tell me question number 5 for the formation of an agreement offer plus acceptance is required next question number 6 a contract is an offer acceptance offer plus acceptance offer plus acceptance plus enforceability i just said 2 minutes back that the agreement in which there is the enforceability of the law such kind of the agreements are called as the contract so for the formation of the contract definitely i'll be needing offer plus acceptance plus enforceability correct next question number 7 now when i am talking about question number 7 a contract is a legal obligation it is an agreement plus a legal obligation right consensus ad idam an agreement plus a legal object question number 7 ka correct option bataiye jaldi se please tell me which one is the correct option when i am talking about question number 7 question number 7 see there is an obligation uh, if you you know get to find someone's goods you have to return it it is an obligation right but there wasn't any kind of a contract there wasn't any kind of an offer acceptance or a promise right so that is also an obligation that you have to that being the finder of the goods you are supposed to return the goods to the true owner that is an obligation correct but that obligation did not rise because of the offer or the acceptance now when i am talking about the contract contract is something you know a kind of an agreement which involves a legal obligation that means contract also involves a legal obligation but that legal obligation is usually voluntarily been taken by both the parties so question number 7 ka correct option kya hoga b next is your question number 8 question number 8 which of the following statement is true we need to mention we have four statements with us and out of these four statements um, uh, if i'll say three statements are false and one of them is the uh, you know true correct statement so let's pick it uh, oh, which okay now let's start an agreement not enforceable by law is a contract an agreement not enforceable by law is a contract tell me is it the true statement or a false statement it is clearly a false statement an agreement is an accepted proposal it seems to be a true statement it obviously what do you mean by an agreement what do you mean by an agreement agreement means when one person has you know offered and the other has accepted it offer plus accepted it is an agreement correct an agreement can only consist of an offer false an agreement can only consist of an acceptance false so the correct option for question number 8 is option number what b next question number 9 which one is not correct so we have got four statements with us and out of these four statements three are true and one of them is false statement correct so let's have a focus on it question number 9 which one is not correct all contracts and agreement tell me is it true or is it false ma'am definitely it is a true statement all agreements are not contract this is also a true statement because we have social agreements with us we have domestic agreements with us so all the agreements are not contract correct this is also a true statement all agreements are contract is it compulsory that all the agreements should be contract only no they may become contract they may not become contract so it is a false statement so out of all the options if i'll say the correct statement is all what the false statement we need to pick a false statement option number c all agreements are contract it's an incorrect statement next question number 10 guys if 
if ever you guys face any kind of a problem if there is any kind of a doubt please do let me know then and there question number 10 the usual presumption is that parties intend to the usual presumption is that parties intend to create a legal relationship in social agreements in family agreements in commercial and the business agreements tell me question number 10 correct option Question number 10, correct option. Bilkul sahi jawab gaurav. The usual presumption in the case of the commercial and the business, business agreements is that the parties intend to create a legal relationship. See, when I am saying it is a usual presumption, it doesn't mean every time it is going to happen. There are many business agreements, there are many, many business agreements in which there is, you know, not even 1% of the enforceability of the law. So it completely and totally depend upon the intentions of the parties. If the parties want, even a domestic agreement can become enforceable in the eyes of the law. And if the parties don't want, even a business agreement will not be considered as a contract if the parties don't want. So it, it is clearly, you know, dependent upon the intentions of the parties. And when the intentions of the parties are not clear, when the intentions of the parties are not clear, then we will assume that every kind of a commercial and a business agreement is but naturally a contract. It involves a kind of a legal relation. There is the enforceability of law. Clear it? Everyone? Aye. Next. Now, question number 11. Express contract is made by words in writing only, words spoken only, Words spoken or written. This is quite simple. I'm not going my I'm not going to waste my time on it. The words which are spoken or written only. Next question number 12. Implied contract is made. Implied contract. When I am talking about question number 12, implied means what? Implied means you need to assume, you need to presume based on the conduct of the parties, based on the circumstances, right? So here we are not going to give the importance on the words. In fact, words are not there, neither in the form of the spoken or the written words. Here, because of the circumstances or because of the conduct of the parties, because of the behavior of the parties, implied contracts are being formed. So they are formed otherwise than by the words spoken or the written. Such kind of the contracts are called as the implied contract. Next is question number 13. Mr. X boards a bus which is running on a route to carry a pass to carry passengers. That means there is a bus and it is not roaming around here and there without any destination. The bus is roaming around with the destination. It is going to a particular route that is being clear to each and every person. So whosoever is boarding that bus is clear from the point that I need to, you know, go somewhere. I have a destination to go. So if X boards a bus which is running on a route to carry passengers, boarding of Mr. X is considered as the implied con. Am I clear with this? Question number 13, point B. Next is your question number what? 14. A contract where both the parties have fulfilled their respective obligation. A contract where both the parties have fulfilled their respective obligations is what? It is called as executed contract. So executions mean performance. When both the parties have completed their performance, it is called as executed because ED, this ED is what? It is something that the work has been done. Both the parties have fulfilled their respective obligations. Remember one thing, not every kind of obligation is covered under the ICA 1872. But whatever the obligation is being covered, it is actually voluntarily being taken up by both the parties. So if X agrees with Y that I will deliver the goods and Y agrees with X that I'll pay the price, both the obligations are required to be fulfilled by both the parties respectively. They should fulfill their obligations, right? And once they have done that, we'll say that the contract has been completed. It has been discharged. It is a kind of an executed contract because both the parties have fulfilled their obligation. So now next, question number 15. 
when i'm talking about question number 15 a contract where both the parties have still to perform a contract where both the parties have still to perform their respective promises yani ki what is what is it is talking about it is talking about the performance which is still which is still pending so it is a kind of an executory contract it is a kind of what an executory contract next is question number 16 a contract where only one party has to perform his promise is called as what a unilateral contract see remember one thing we usually form a contract in which both the parties have the obligation but sometimes a kind of a contract is been formed in which only one party has to perform it it's not like that the second party will perform in future or they'll perform in present or something like that the second party is not under any kind of an obligation there is a contract between the two parties but within those two parties only one person is under the obligation that means that one person has got the liability it is a one sided liability contract it is a unilateral contract am i clear with this let me tell you guys if anybody is attending my lecture let me clear it to you you are going to understand these mcqs only when you have completed the ica 1872 from your end that means you have watched the lectures you have done with you are done with the reading part also right you have done the revision also and now you are here to revise it now you are here to practice the questions then only you can understand all of these correct next question number 17 a contract in which both the parties have to perform the promise a contract where both the parties it doesn't matter when they are going to perform See, when I am talking about bilateral contract and a unilateral contract, bilateral and unilateral contract does not talk about the time of the performance. They tells us regarding who is under the obligation. If only one of the party is under the obligation, it is a unilateral contract. If both the parties are having some kind of the obligation, the promise of the one party is the consideration for the other, and the you know promise of the second party is the consideration for the first party. So this kind of the mutual promises and consideration will gives us a bilateral contract. So a contract in which both the parties have to perform the promise. It doesn't matter when they are going to perform. They may perform it. together simultaneously you know we have read about the reciprocal promises remember you can perform the contract simultaneously or maybe your contract is your performance is based on uh, the performance of the other person correct remember or not now next question number 18 a contract which is inferred from the conduct of the parties or the circumstances of the case that means here we are talking about the contract which is not formed out of the words spoken or written they are formed by the conduct of the parties so the correct option or the correct answer would be the implied contract but as we don't have any of the options mentioned here out of these four options that we are reading right now out of these four options that we are reading right now the best suitable option is the tacit contract tacit means silent a kind of a contract which is formed uh, silently without use of any words spoken or the written so the correct option is c with respect to question number 18 next question number 19 now what do you mean by a void able contract a void able contract as you all know is a kind of a contract usually it is been formed when the consent of one of the party is not free right when the consent of one of the parties is not free at all so if the consent of one of the inferred means to uh, assume it will assume it that it is going to be like that inferred means that a voidable contract is a kind of a contract in which one of the in which the consent of one of the parties is not free that is why as per the eyes of the law it is voidable the aggrieved party whose consent was not free will be given an option to get out of the contract or he or she can also choose to continue with that particular contract so voidable contract is a kind of a contract which can be avoided which can be avoided usually once a contract is formed it is a kind of a commitment 
usually once a contract is formed it is a kind of a commitment you have to fulfill it you cannot back out correct otherwise it will be termed as a breach of contract but after the formation of the contract if the pictures you know came into the picture uh, if what uh, this thing came into the picture that the consent of one of the parties was you know obtained by fraud undue influence coercion misrepresentation or something like that then that clearly shows that one of the parties is an aggrieved party so that aggrieved party will get the right to just come out of that contract he or she can avoid the contract if they want to now so tell me avoidable contract if they want to as said the aggrieved party can avoid the contract but if the aggrieved party does not take any kind of action you know then it will remain valid in the eyes of the law so now read the question number 19 avoidable contract remains always remains enforceable by law remains enforceable by law if the aggrieved party repudiates the contract repudiates means refuses the contract that means if the aggrieved party as per the law has the option to refuse the contract then definitely it will become a void contract correct it will not be continued as a valid contract but it will remain enforceable by law if the aggrieved party does not repudiate the contract see the weaker party who is being dominated by one of the parties and the undue influence has been used as for example under section number 16 and weaker party came to know that okay it is because of the dominance of the other person that i formed a contract but still the weaker party is not taking any kind of action he is not refusing the contract he is not taking any kind of an action then gradually with the passage of time it will remain be considered as a valid contract so avoidable contract remains enforceable by law if the aggrieved party does not repudiate the contract am i clear with this guys tell me am i clear with all of you are you guys enjoying this or not now next question number 20 now let's let's talk about question number 20 an agreement is voidable contract an agreement is voidable contract when it is enforceable when it is enforceable if certain conditions are fulfilled enforceable by law at the option of the aggrieved party enforceable by both the parties not enforceable at all see clearly with the definition of the voidable contract it has been mentioned it is a kind of a contract which can be avoided that means when we are talking about a voidable contract a void able a void able contract is a kind of a contract that may become void or they or it may become a valid contract now who is going to decide that the aggrieved party so only the aggrieved party not both the parties so tell me which one is the correct option which one is the correct option it is enforceable by law at the option of the aggrieved party next is your question number 21 an agreement not enforceable by law is said to be void voidable valid unenforceable or illegal tell me a kind of an agreement which is not enforceable by law is said to be what tell me it is said to be a kind of a void agreement void agreement means an agreement which is void from the very beginning whether it is known to the parties or whether it is not known to the parties if it is known to the parties still the parties are forming such kind of an agreement then the principle of restitution is not applicable am i clear with this but even if the parties knows about it still the agreement is not a valid contract so any kind of an agreement which is not enforceable from the very beginning such kind of agreements are called as the void agreement like forming an agreement with a minor or forming a contract which lacks consideration any kind of a promise which lacks consideration is not enforceable by law so any kind of an agreement in which the consideration is not there such kind of an agreement cannot be considered as a contract it will be considered as a void agreement the agreement is not enforceable by law is said to be void am i clear now the next part
क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी टू एन अग्रीमेंट द ऑब्जेक्ट और द कंसिडरेशन ऑफ विच इज अनलॉफुल now here we are specifically talking about a kind of an agreement which is not enforceable in the eyes of the law and the reason is what the object or the consideration is unlawful such kind of an agreements are void ab initio plus punishable by the law and hence they are called as the illegal agreement clear hai everyone now question number 23 the transaction which is collateral to an illegal agreement remember or not a transaction if any kind of an agreement which is an illegal agreement if it touches or get you know associated with any other kind of an agreement which is collateral to it such kind of an additional or a collateral agreement will also be considered as a void agreement because we'll assume that it is also tainted with illegality it has also been marked it has also been you know comes into the category of the illegality so the correct option for question number 23 it is also tainted with illegality am i clear next question number 24 collateral agreements also become void collateral agreements also become void agreements in the case of void agreement in case of illegal agreement void contract or voidable contract tell me which one is the correct option for question number 24 the correct option is the illegal agreement illegal agreement is a kind of an void ab initio agreement which is punishable by the law correct it is an kind of a void ab initio agreement which is punishable by the law any kind of a collateral agreement with an illegal agreement will also be considered as a void agreement. next question number 25 question number 25 a contract may be void as originally entered into may be may become void subsequent to its formation cannot become void under any circumstances may become void at the will of the other party so now listen to me one thing very carefully daily shorts is asking what do you mean by the collateral contracts collateral contracts are the kind of the contracts which are formed along with the contract with a purpose right so they are formed with a contract we need to check the enforceability of both kind of the contracts so see listen uh, daily shorts i don't know what's your name definitely your name is not daily shorts but just keep this point in mind i will explain this point after the ending of the lecture clear now listen to me very clearly a contract cannot be invalid from the very initial level any kind of a contract if i'll say it is void from the very initial level it is an agreement not a contract so a contract which is you know it may become subsequently void so a contract may be void as originally entered into that is something not possible whenever you are giving the answers of the mcqs there may be a point that you know the exact answer and there may be the circumstances when you don't know the answer so what you guys are supposed to do you have got four options with you correct you guys have four options with you फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल एक्सक्लूड दो ऑप्शन सबसे पहले उन ऑप्शन को बाहर कर दीजिए जिनका आपको हंड्रेड एंड वन परसेंट श्योरिटी है कि भाई ये तो हो ही नहीं सकता लाइक क्वेश्चन नंबर ए ट्वेंटी फाइव का ए ऑप्शन तो हो ही नहीं सकता सी ऑप्शन भी नहीं हो सकता डेफिनेटली अब बी और डी में से यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड सो दिस इज कॉल्ड एज द थ्योरी ऑफ एक्सक्लूसिविटी इफ यू नो दी आंसर देन जस्ट put a tick mark if you don't know the answer right then just exclude all these things kaun sa subject hai business law ica okay now question number 25 a contract may become void subsequent to its formation va shore gupta Now you are saying that the ma'am information technology पढ़ा रही है really कहां पर मैंने systems के बारे में बात करी है tell me that हाँ ये जरूर है कि when I am uh, taking this lecture तो मेरा motive ये है कि मैं आप लोगों के साथ ज्यादा से ज्यादा English में interact करूँ 
और इसका पर्पस ही ये है ताकि आप लोग हैबिचुअल बने हो सकता है यहाँ पे बहुत सारे बच्चों को लग रहा होगा कि यार आज बहुत ज्यादा इंग्लिश हो रही है क्योंकि जितने भी लेक्चर्स हम लोगों ने लिए हैं वी हैव यू नो टेकन दोज लेक्चर्स इन हिंदी लैंग्वेज बट एट दी एंड यू कैन नॉट इग्नोर इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज एट एनी पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम बिकॉज इट इज गोइंग टू बी यूजफुल फॉर ईच वन ऑफ यू so that's why deliberately intentionally i decided that most of the time i'll be speaking in english so that my students will become habitual with all these stuff am i clear with this shore gupta tell me this is my only purpose and let me tell you clearly and uh, you know this thing very clearly if your concepts are clear if your concepts are clear it is not going to be very difficult for you it is going to be difficult only for those persons who haven't completed ica 1872 yet who haven't you know uh, read it earlier if you have read it earlier it is not going to be a difficult point for any one of you हम जिस चीज की बचपन से आदत डाल लेते हैं वो चीज हमें इजी लगने लगती है तो अगर आप इस लैंग्वेज के ऊपर आदत डालना शुरू कर देंगे अभी से ही इफ यूल स्टार्ट क्रिएटिंग यू नो इफ यूल स्टार्ट बिल्डिंग दिस हैबिट ऑफ लिसनिंग इन इंग्लिश स्पीकिंग इन इंग्लिश देन इट विल यू नो बिकम अबिट ऑफ यूर एंड देन यू गाइज आर नॉट गोइंग टू बी स्केर्ड ऑफ इट सो आई विल ट्राई माई बेस्ट that is something what i am looking for a kind of a feedback from all of you that yes ma'am it is going to be beneficial for us because i know it is going to be beneficial for you if any of you thinks that no ma'am the speed is very fast please slow down you guys have got the whole control on your youtube right just click on the speed button you can slow down my speed and if you think that the speed is uh, you know little bit slow then you can increase it you guys have got the option in your hands this is something you guys have to choose not me so let's get back to the main topic question number 26 which one is not correct so we have got total four statements with us out of these four statements we have three true or the correct statements with us and one of them is the false statement we need to pick that we need to choose that correct a contract can be void ab initio do you really think so a contract which is void ab initio is not called as a contract it is called as an agreement an agreement void ab initio correct it is called as the void agreement so this statement is clearly a false statement an agreement can be void ab initio this is true a contract can be voidable at the option of one or more of the parties true a contract can be valid ab initio this is also a true statement so when i am talking about the correct option they asked us which one of them is the false statement so a contract can be void ab initio next question number 27 if x who is dealer in a coconut oil only we have a dealer right who deals in only a specific kind of an oil which is the coconut oil and then now he decides to sell 100 tons of oil at the rate of 20000 per ton he makes an offer to sell 100 tons of oil see in this particular highlighted thing they haven't mentioned the kind of an oil but still this is a kind of a certain agreement this is also a kind of a valid contract why because the person who is giving this offer to sell 100 tons of oil at the rate of 20000 per ton is only a dealer of a specific kind of a oil which is a what coconut oil so definitely and but naturally it is a kind of a valid contract great so now question number 28 x who is dealer in coconut oil decide to sell to y 100 tons of oil but the price is not fixed now tell me question number 28 is it a valid contract is it a void contract see even if the price is not fixed then still the contract can be considered as what tell me is it a valid is it a void or what kind of a contract
Tell me, what kind of a contract is it? I need answers from everyone. So, if I will talk about the sales of goods act. See, if I will talk about the sales of goods act, then definitely it can also be considered as a valid contract. Honestly, it can also be what? Considered as a valid contract. But if I will talk about, say, what? If I will talk about the Indian contract at 1872, then it will be considered as what? Tell me. Kya bolenge isko? Ye valid hai ki void hai? Are, when we are talking about the ICA, when we are talking about the SOGA, clearly we know that there is a dealer who deals in coconut oils and he decides to sell to buy 100 tons of the oil. So what even if the price is not there? That's completely fine. I have told you all very clearly that even if the price is not mentioned, then still the contract will be considered as a valid contract. The terms and conditions with which you guys are forming the contract can be less. The terms and conditions can be less. But what you are supposed to focus on, whatever the terms and conditions you have, like one condition, two condition or three conditions, they are supposed to be certain. They are supposed to be specific. They should not be vacuum or an um, unambiguous. Am I clear? So there has to be what? A kind of a validity. Question number 28. X who, who is a dealer in a coconut oil decides to sell to buy 100 tons of oil but the price is not fixed. That means it is a kind of a valid contract. Clear hai everyone? I hope I am clear with each one of you. Now question number 29. X who is dealer in coconut oil? decides to sell by 100 tons of oil but the price is to be fixed but the price is to be fixed by z Aap mujhe bataye. now tell me one thing guys is there any kind of a certainty in it or not is there any kind of a certainty in it or not definitely prices can be fixed by the third parties and on that basis both the seller and the buyer are supposed to you know, followed are supposed to accept the prices which is being given by the third person. That is Mr. Z. So, when I am talking about, say, X who is a dealer in a coconut oil decides to sell Y 100 tons of oil but the price is to be fixed by Z. Such kind of a contract is totally a valid contract. Next, question number 30. A contract that creates right in personam or rights in rem only rights and no obligation only obligation and no rights so when i am talking about the ica 1872 it is a kind of a contract which you know creates a right of one person towards the other person not towards the object but towards the other person so that means such kind of a right is called as the right in personam when you have the right against the other person okay Next is your question number 31. A contract, a contract was entered before 1st of September 1872 is governed by the ICA 1872. Tell me, see 1872 came into the picture when I am talking about say um, the ICA 1872, it came into the picture on 1st of the September 1872. But there would be definitely some of the contracts which have been formed before the formation of the contract. So tell me, uh, is ICA? Yashashvi, definitely I can understand your perspective, but do remember one thing. What I have told you in the initial classes also, that the terms and conditions can be less, but whatever or whichever terms and conditions are there, they are supposed to be specific. And also that is something we have read in the SOGA. That the price is something, a thing, price is a thing which we can decide at a later stage also. And still we can form a contract. So this is the thing which we have read in both the laws, in the ICA also and in the SOGA also. Am I clear with this? Yashashvi, tell me. So when I am talking about the contract which was entered before the 1st of September, the correct option is, that the act will not be applicable retrospectively. So, we have got these two words with us. One is retrospectively. 
okay and the other is prospectively any kind of an act which is applicable on the previous transactions also before the act com comes into the picture and if it is applicable to the contracts which were you know formed before the formation of the contract such kind of a thing is not mentioned but such kind of a contracts are the retrospectively agreements the ICA has not mentioned anywhere that it is going to be applicable on those contracts also which are formed before 1st of September 1872. Am I clear? Next is your question number 32. Now, question number 32. Which one of the following is not a contract? Out of all these kinds of contracts, please highlight. Okay, Sanya. It's the short one, then I'll explain. See, ICA 1872 came into picture or came into force. Came into force on 1st of September 1872. But definitely before coming of this act, there might be some contracts. So, these are the contracts or I'll say the business agreements. These are the contracts or the business agreements which are formed. Which are formed before the applicability of the IC 1872. ICA came into picture on 1st of September 1872. Just assume that this kind of a contract has been formed on say 1st of say October. 1870 that means before the you know what applicability before the law coming into the force there were some contracts which were being formed now there are some contracts which are formed after the formation of the ic on 1st of october say 1873 this is the date of the contract formation a contract which is formed after the applicability of this act is but naturally supposed to follow this particular act. But all those agreements which were formed before the ICA 1872, all those agreements are not supposed to follow the provision. All these agreements are not supposed to follow the provisions of ICA 1872. Why? Because ICA 1872 is not applicable retrospectively. See, ये चीज होती है कई बारी कि sometimes आपका कोई ना ऐसा law आता है और ये बोल दिया जाता है उसमें clearly ये बात mention कर दी जाती है कि ये जो कानून आया है ये पिछली transactions के ऊपर भी apply होगा। अगर ऐसा specifically लिखा हुआ है तो ठीक है। फिर तो आपने पास में भी जो भी ट्रांजैक्शंस करी है ये उसके ऊपर अप्लाई हो जाएगा लेकिन अगर ऐसा कुछ भी नहीं लिखा हुआ है तो ICA 1872 जो है वो आपकी पास की ट्रांजैक्शंस में वो ट्रांजैक्शन जो 1 सितंबर 1872 से पहले हुई है ऑन दोस ट्रांजैक्शन इट इज नॉट गोइंग टू बी एप्लीकेबल एम आई क्लियर नाउ फटाफट से चलते हैं व्हिच वन ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज नॉट अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट नाउ यू गाइस हैव क्वेश्चन नंबर 32 इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू now tell me out of all these you know uh, say options which one is not a contract question number a point option number a a engages b for a certain work and promises to pay such remuneration as shall be fixed by c b does the work now this is a kind of a business agreement clearly this is a kind of a what business agreement that means it is a contract now when we are talking about Option number B, A and B promises to marry each other. Now, you guys will, you guys must be thinking, ma'am, to marry each other is not a contract. Correct. To marry each other is not a kind of a contract. But lawmakers have clearly mentioned through the kind of the damages we have, which we have covered, one of the damage is the vindictive damages. Vindictive damages which is mentioned under the Indian contract at 1872 under the topic remedies for the breach of contract. In that particular you know section or in that particular say paragraph it has been mentioned that if one person promises to the other person 
to get married and does not fulfill it, then the other person can file a suit against that person. So it is somehow a kind of a contract. Now, a takes a seat in a public vehicle. So if I have taken a seat in a public vehicle, then I have to pay the charges. It is a kind of a contract, clearly. A invites B to a card party. B accepts the invitation. This is what a social agreement. This is not a kind of a contract. Now, I'll explain this thing in Hindi also. Listen to me very clearly. ICA 1872 हमें clearly ये बोलता है कि marriage करना नहीं करना भाई ये तो आपके अपने खुद के options होते हैं आपके अपनी choice होती है है contract नहीं होते हैं लेकिन ICA 1872 ने ये जरूर बता दिया कि शादी के लिए किसी को promises अगर आपने किए वो contract नहीं है लेकिन अगर वो promises आपने तोड़ दिए तो उसके damages जो है ना वो जरूर ICA ने तो ICA ने एक अलग ही टाइप के डैमेजेस है पुनिटिव जिसको मैं विंडिक्टिव भी बुलाती हूँ विंडिक्टिव और जिसको मैं एक्सेम्पलरी डैमेजेस भी बुलाती हूँ आप सबको पता है जब भी ब्रीच होता है तो ब्रीच ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट में कुछ रेमेडीज दी जाती है वो ब्रीच ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट में कुछ रेमेडीज होती है रेमेडीज में वो होता है डैमेजेस रेसिशन कैंसिलेशन ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इंजंक्शन स्पेसिफिक परफॉर्मेंस क्वांटम मेरिट कुछ याद है उन रेमेडीज में एक रेमेडी क्या थी डैमेजेस डैमेजेस इज व्हाट मॉनेटरी कॉम्पेंसेशन सो आईसीए 1872 जो है ना वो कहता है कि मैं ये दो तरीके के मैं ये दो तरीके के सरकमस्टेंसेस बता रहा हूं ये सरकमस्टेंसेस में अगर कभी भी ब्रीच हुआ ये सरकमस्टेंसेस में अगर कभी भी ब्रीच हुआ तो सीधा मान लेना डैमेजेस लगेंगे और उन डैमेजेस का नाम क्या होगा पुनिटिव विंडिक्टिव एंड एग्जेम्पलरी कौन से सरकमस्टेंसेस जब आपने किसी से शादी का वादा किया और वो प्रॉमिस आपने प्रॉमिसेस टू मैरी और वो आपने प्रॉमिस जो है वो फुलफिल नहीं किया किसी से शादी करना या शादी का वादा करना ये सब कुछ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट नहीं है ये सब कुछ बाइंडिंग भी नहीं है लेकिन अगर आपने उस प्रॉमिस को तोड़ दिया प्रॉमिस किया और फिर वो आपने प्रॉमिस तोड़ दिया तो डेफिनेटली ऑपोजिट पार्टी आपके ऊपर ब्रीच ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट का इनफैक्ट केस फाइल कर सकती है आपसे डैमेजेस क्लेम कर सकती है और उन डैमेजेस का ये वो जो डैमेजेस होते हैं ना ये आपके वो डैमेजेस हैं जो आपके ऑनर के बदले में आपको दिए जा रहे हैं आपने ऑपोजिट पार्टी को पहले प्रॉमिस किया कि आई विल मैरी यू फिर आपने उससे शादी नहीं करी तो उसकी कहीं ना कहीं ऑनर पर बात आ जाती है राइट right? तो उस ऑनर को कॉम्पनसेट करने के लिए आपकी जो काइंड ऑफ डैमेजेस जो आईसीए मेंशन करता है उसे हम कहते हैं पुनिटिव विंडिक्टिव एंड एग्जेम्पलरी डैमेजेस क्लियर एवरीवन सो प्रॉमिस टू मैरी अगर आपने ब्रीच कर दिया और ये प्रॉमिस अगर आपने तोड़ दिया तो इसके डैमेजेस जरूर आईसीए के अंदर लिखे होंगे इन द सेम वे डू यू रिमेंबर वन थिंग कि आपने किसी को चेक दिया और वो चेक बाउंस हो गया तो क्या बैंक आपसे बाउंसिंग चार्जेस लेता है लेता है ना हाँ या ना बोलो मैंने एक चेक इश्यू किया ठीक है जिसमें मैंने पेमेंट करनी थी विशाल को मगर वो चेक बाउंस हो गया तो बैंक मुझसे बाउंसिंग चार्जेस लेगा ना डिसऑनर ऑफ चेक के मगर सोचो मेरे अकाउंट में पैसा था आपकी नीति मैम ने पचास हजार का चेक काट कर दिया था किसे विशाल को इसी उम्मीद में कि भाई विशाल को पेमेंट हो जाएगी आपकी नीति मैम के अकाउंट में पांच लाख रुपए रखे हुए हैं तो बट नेचुरली पचास हजार का चेक तो क्लियर हो जाना चाहिए मगर बैंक से गलती हो गई इस बार और बैंक ने जो है पेमेंट नहीं किया बाउंस करा दिया चेक मेरा पैसा होने के बावजूद अब सोचो मेरी कितनी इंसल्ट हुई ना विशाल के सामने विशाल तो यही सोचेगा ना कि बताओ लॉ की फैकल्टी बनती है और इनके पास पचास हजार भी नहीं है सो इट इज ऑल अबाउट माई ऑनर सो अगर रॉन्गफुल डिसऑनर होता है रॉन्गफुल डिसऑनर ऑफ द चेक क्योंकि ये भी आपकी इज्जत पर बात आ गई रॉन्गफुल डिसऑनर ऑफ द चेक बाय द बैंकर इन दोनों सिचुएशन में जो डैमेजेस आपके आईसीए रिकमेंड करता है लेने के लिए दो दॉल्ड एज दिनेटिव इंडिकटिव एंड एग्जेम्पलरी डैमेजेस CMA students are not supposed to go into the details of these things, but because it is a, not a part of your syllabus, still you need to have the knowledge of it because it will definitely come in the intermediate level. Am I clear, everyone?
Now, next is your question number 33. Let me see how many questions are there. We are supposed to, we are about to clear, we are about to uh, complete these two questions also. Then we will end today's lecture and uh, we'll come again tomorrow. We'll meet again tomorrow and then we'll start with a new topic. Question number 33. Is the correct option kya tha? That is D. Okay. So the question number 33, just in personems means what? A right against or in respect of a thing? No, it is a right. In against or in respect of a person. Question number 34. One person can contract with himself or with himself and others jointly. Tell me, is it going to be like that? Can a one person contract with himself? No, we need minimum two parties. So no, at least two persons or parties must be involved. With this question, finally, we have completed our first unit of the ICA 1872. We have completed approximately 34 questions, but I think it is good for the starting part, right? We can now continue it later on. Tomorrow, again, I'm going to meet you all at the same time, 11 o'clock in the morning, till 11, from 11 till 12. This one hour is going to be dedicated for the MCQ, you know, uh, part so that you guys can revise. Tomorrow, we'll start with our topic called Offer and the Acceptance. I hope, guys, you have enjoyed this lecture and uh, uh, it has benefited you. Please do like it and do share it with your friends in every kind of your WhatsApp groups and the Telegram groups. Thank you so much, everyone. Enjoy.